last week about spiritual battles. We talked about uh, Satan and the, the army that he has uh, and that there are, there are battles that we face. And there's battles that we face every day, uh, most of which we can't see. A lot of times we can't see the spiritual battles. And how many people are just grateful for that? I mean, are you like grateful, you know, that you don't know all the things that are going on? Um, <clears throat> I think it would scare the heebie-jeebies out of us. Honestly, I, I think it would really freak us out if we could see all the spiritual things that, that go on and um, we can't fully understand it. There's going to be a time when we do, uh, when, when that trumpet sounds and, and we're in, uh, with the Lord, I believe instantaneously there's going to be a whole lot of things that, that uh, we understand perfectly, but at the time we can't, we can't see it. And so we've got these battles that are going on around us. Uh, some of them you can't understand, some of them just because of my perspective and, and, and what God has called me to do, sometimes I can see them uh, where it's not on your radar, but it's on mine, okay? And uh, I'm not trying to freak you out with that or, you know, ooh, Pastor Randy, whatever, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like even last week, the subject matter that we talked about, okay, when we're talking about walking in freedom, okay, that was probably a hard Sunday for you to get here. Probably a hard Sunday. Some missed it, honestly, because I believe that that battle was so intense over that message of getting here. There, there are things that happen. There are things that happen to try to disrupt what happens in your families, etc., cetera, uh, because you've given your hearts and lives to the Lord. I know all of us are on different levels there with that. Maybe you're here today and you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord yet. My prayer is that today you would that you surrender your life to the Lord. But for those who have surrendered your life to, to, to Christ, there are battles that go on, and they try to prohibit you from being where God wants you to be. Anybody here? There are. Things that happen. You know, sometimes there's feelings that come upon you that you don't understand, and, and sometimes it's, it's strictly it's spiritual. Things that happen. And that's why it's so important that every day we are surrendered to the Lord. It's so important that every day you have given your full heart and devotion to Him. The, so the things that we're singing about this morning, I surrender all to you, I am nothing without you, until we believe that, until we believe that as individuals, until we believe that corporately, we can't accomplish anything. It's only through the power of the Lord, the power, power of His Holy Spirit, that we can accomplish what He desires us to do in the plans that he has for us to fill. Apparently, I'm talking too long. My iPad went off. <laughs> okay. Um, so there are battles that are going on. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5 says this, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets its up, sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. This is a scripture that we should know, because it is so important for us to take captive every thought. So the things that the enemy tries to put in your mind, the thoughts, the emotions, etc., it's, that's, it's at that moment where we take captive those thoughts and we say, I am not believing that. I'm not receiving that feeling. Lord, this is what your word says. I'm going to walk in it today. I'm going to be who you've called me to be. I'm going to live your purposes and your plans. I'm not going to let my mind stray towards whatever it is that happens to be the button that the enemy's pushing for you. But to take captive every thought. But the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of this world. Have you ever gotten to a fight? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I mean, have you ever like got into a fight? I mean, like you got into a fight. I mean, it was, whew, you know, I mean, you, you were, you know, going after it and they hit you and you hit them and the thing about fights is you never feel better. You know, you get that fight or flight thing going on and your adrenaline's just through the roof, and you know, you almost get a headache. It's so 
overpowering, and, and it's like everything's in slow motion around you, and you know, you're thinking you're living the matrix or something, right? See, the amazing thing about serving the Lord is the weapons that we fight with are not like that. You know, we don't have to be walking down the street ready to pop somebody. Is anyone here today? I'm just checking. We don't have to be walking down the street thinking, I'm ready now. Come on, just bring it. And they just say one thing. Some people live that way. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. They're spiritual weapons that the Lord has given us. And uh, the big idea today, honestly, is there's a spiritual battle. And I would even say this, there are spiritual battles that we face each day. And one of the things that's really important is that we get that on our radar as believers in Jesus. That we recognize those things are happening. Because if you know that someone is constantly trying to distract you, um, it, it brings our focus, it brings us into greater focus with our Lord. It helps us to recognize, God, I'm following you today. I don't want to be distracted by the things of this world. I don't want to be distracted by the enemy's plans or to get off course with you. Have you ever been distracted and you, like later on, honestly, later on you thought, I totally blew it there. I totally blew it. I totally fell right into the enemy's plan there. I am not where I should have been. Anybody? I, I knew I got completely off course. I didn't try to get off course, but I followed my emotions. I followed distractions, and I'm here right now when I should be over here. And oftentimes those things prevent us from, from God's plan. They prevent us from, from following his plan, following his perfect will. But in God's grace, right, in God's grace, he gives us multiple chances, and he, he's helping us along, and he still works. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. We, we know that verse. We commit to that verse. And the Lord in his grace guides us along. It's an amazing thing. So here we are in Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. Paul is talking here and he says, A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. We're, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Word today. God, I pray that it will breathe life into us. Lord, help us to recognize what's going on around us, that we would be able to stand firm, stand in your truth, God, and not be deceived by an enemy who's trying to deceive many at this time. We love you, Lord. We know that in the end days, God, that knowledge will increase. We know that the deception of the enemy will increase, and God, the deception will come into the church and will deceive many. And so, God, I pray that you would help us, help us as South County Church, help us as the body of Christ, help the churches of this area, God, not be deceived by the enemy, but help us, Lord, be focused upon you, that we would accomplish every good and purpose, every good will and purpose that you have for us. We thank you for this. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone who believes, say, amen. amen, amen. So here this morning, we're saying how to fight our spiritual battles, 
how to fight our spiritual battles, getting tips or keys really out of this passage. We'll, we'll go into this in a little more detail next week, but I kind of wanted to set a foundation here for us, uh, tips on how to fi- fight our spiritual battles. The first one is this, to be strong in Him. Be strong in Him. Ephesians 6.10 says, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Have you ever tried to do something on your own and failed? And it could be something simple. It could be something um, very complicated. You know, if there's something that happens at your house, and as guys, we try to fix it, right? Because that's what we do. We are fixers. And uh, so, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of that. And, oh, there's a leak. Why does that do that? Right? And so sometimes you have to call somebody else who knows what to do. Uh, it could be something as simple as, have you ever been trying to open a jar? And you're like, I mean, here, <laughs> you know, and you're, you're having problems with it. And so you, and then you take it and you hand it to somebody. They're like, oh, what? I loosened it for you. There's something about knowing who is there to help you in life. For some of you, it was a big brother, a big sister. I can remember being in a fight, and I came home, and I told my dad, and we got in the 1970 Toyota pickup, and it was on. We were going after him. I don't know what we were going to do, but we were going after him. And thank God we never found him. But it's just, you, you know, you, you understand when you, when you know whose you are, Listen, when you know whose you are, and you know who has the authority, and you know who has the power, you can be strong in their ability. And there are things that you can do that you cannot do on your own. We need to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Be strong in the Lord, not from our strength, not from our power, but God's power turning to the Lord. Sometimes we don't know what to do. Have you been there? You don't know what to do and there's a situation, there's a circumstance, you don't understand what to do. It's time to get down on our knees and say, God, I don't know what to do, but I know you do. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but I will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Psalm 20, verse 7, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to be strong in you. This is not something I can just get out there and fight about. Well, I'm just going to speak my mind. I'm just going to tell them. You ever thought that? How'd that go? Sometimes when the Lord's leading you to that confrontation, yeah, there's a difference. But I'm just going to tell them. I'm just going to... I'm going to sit down at my computer and I'm going to just put it on Facebook. I'm going to tell them. How did that go? Instead of saying, Lord, that situation bugs me. And I feel every emotion in my flesh rising up. God, I'm going to leave that in your hands. I'm going to trust you. Lord, give me wisdom when to say something and honestly when to shut up. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And we then become empowered to to do the will of God. It's the Lord who strengthens us. It's the Lord who enables us. It's the Lord who directs our lives and determines our steps. Be strong in the Lord. Sometimes, see, the worldly mindset is, I can do it. You know, we, especially if you're a guy, you're like, and it's all about physical, etc. It's not. Be strong in the Lord 
He's the one that directs our step. He's the one that takes care of things. This word in the Greek, okay, <laughs> we don't get into the Greek a whole lot, but I, I think it's really important to look at this word because this word for strong in the Greek, I'm not going to try to say it. I'll say it wrong and it's going to be okay. So, But the whole idea behind this word is that it goes, it talks about increasing in strength. Okay, it's not just about, okay, I was strong once. It's like increasing in strength. Increasing in strength. And you, when you read Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty, you just recognize this is the Lord strengthening us to do as well. This is the Lord strengthening us, strengthening us to do his work. So how do we fight our spiritual battles? Church, we be strong in the Lord. We be strong in him. Amen? Amen. Second thing here, how do we fight our spiritual battles? Put on your armor. Uh, if you've been in the military at all, okay, you know what it's like to be out of uniform somewhere. And um, there's practical reasons for it. So like in peacetime, you know, when you're out of uniform, uh, maybe you have something on wrong or you're just literally in the wrong uniform for the day. Um, it's, it's not good, okay? And you'll get in trouble for that, etc. cetera. Uh, but there's reasons for that discipline. There's reasons for that, that, that peacetime discipline is because we have to train in peacetime like it's war. There's reasons behind that. And so um, that's why the military is so disciplined over those things of being and doing the right thing in times of peace because when it comes down to war, you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. I can remember being in Saudi Arabia and, and um, we were all decked, decked out, flag Flak vests, everything. We had had all our Kevlar's and everything, and and uh, there was Scud missiles and all that kind of thing that were that were a, a potential to happen at any time. And so, anyhow, something had happened. I, I still don't know what it was. I was a private at the time, but all of a sudden we see something fly across the sky, and everyone just panics. And we've got our gas masks, and we're reaching for our gas masks and putting it on because we don't know what's going to happen. There's something about having all your equipment, okay, and this is something that Scripture addresses, that helps us be ready for the battles that we face. So I didn't need the gas mask all the time. Praise you, Jesus. Anybody who's ever done the gas chamber through training recognizes, whew, I don't really want to, yeah, thank you. See, Roberto, he agrees with me back there. Um, I didn't need that all the time, but I had it. I had it. It was on me. It was on me, and I could go after that whenever I needed it. It was, it was part of my protection. And so putting on our armor, putting on our armor, having our armor with us, this is what Scripture tells us here. Ephesians 6, 11 says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. See, let's stop here for a second. We need to understand that the enemy has a strategy to destroy you. Well, that's a real pick-me-up. Thank you so much, Pastor Andy. I feel better. No. He does. He has a strategy to destroy you, and that's why the truth of God's Word is so important, because it helps us to be ready for the battles that we're going to face. He has this strategy to, to harm us, uh, but we're given this, the truth of God's word, uh, the armor is explained, and so we have our armor here, 6.13, Ephesians 6.13 says, therefore put on every piece of God's armor. You could like camp right there, okay, because sometimes we have some of his armor, but we don't have all of it, and scripture says to put on all of it. Sometimes the armor is not comfortable. Sometimes it's hot and stuffy. We had chemical suits that would raise our body temperature and things out on the battlefield. It's not comfortable sometimes to do what we're told to do, but it's the right thing to do for so many different reasons. 
And so our armor here, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. What a great promise, by the way. What a great promise. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. It's two pieces that we'll look at here today. We'll, we'll go into more uh, next week, but two pieces we'll look at of God's armor that we're told uh, to put on. And the first one is this belt of truth. Um, it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility as believers in Jesus Christ to know the truth, to live the truth, and to declare the truth. It's our responsibility. We must know it. And it becomes even more important in a day and age when the, the Word of God has become, quote, obsolete. Okay, and all of a sudden we've become enlightened by something, uh, the enemy's strategy that we just talked about. Okay, where we become enlightened and we no longer turn to the truth of God's Word. And so here this belt of truth is talking about us, you and me, knowing the truth of God's Word living that truth out and then declaring it, okay, not in a, well, you know what the Word of God says about that? Let me just tell you, we, we don't do that. We know it, we live it, and we declare it as God gives us opportunities to teach truth, because we all get off course at times, don't we? Don't we all kind of get off course? And we need each other. That's one of the greatest things about being part of a church is if you get off course, even as your pastor, having a group of guys around me that I said, look, just slap me if I start doing something stupid. That I don't want a bunch of yes men around me or yes people around me. I want people who will speak the truth. When I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. This belt of truth. There's a lesson here for us. The Bible is truth. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable, this belt of truth. I wrote something down here, um, just reflecting on where we are as a nation and the things, that, the things that we're deciding to do. Why is America struggling to find its way? When we turn away from the truth of God's word, and turn to public opinion for standards in life that are based on feelings and worldly ideas, we get off course. We're no longer having the belt of truth on. What does everyone say we should do? Let's take a poll. Let's take a survey. Let's see, what do we feel like we should do? And whenever we do that, and we no longer cling to the standard, which is God's word, we get off course. And one of the things that we have as a core value at South County Church is teaching biblical truth. Pray for us that we would always declare the truth of God's word, no matter how unpopular it becomes. The second aspect here is body armor. And the natural body armor, okay, protects our vital organs. It protects us, covers our vital organs. In the spiritual sense, as we live righteously before God, it protects our very lives. It protects us. And living according to God's word protects us from the enemy's plans and all the drama that can be associated with following the enemy. It protects us. 
Psalm 119.9 says, how can a young man stay pure? By obeying your word. Coming back to that belt of truth again. But we're told to put on God's armor, and that protects us physically, but it protects us doing what God has asked us to do. We, we all understand this. We understand this, right? When you were growing up, you know, when you did what mom and dad asked you to do, wasn't there protection in that? Wasn't there life in that? Didn't it breathe life into you? What happened when you did not do what you were asked to do? We don't want to talk about that. Some are going through... Lots of counseling right now over that. We laugh, okay? But when we live according to God's righteousness, according to his word, there is a protection and a blessing that comes upon our lives. It is a powerful thing. And it protects us, it shields us from a lot of the drama of this life. It shields us. When we've gone off, our own way and done our own thing, all the drama that it's caused. We would not have a National Enquirer today. It was Drew, I think, that we were walking through the grocery line, and Drew's looking, and he's like, what is that, you know? It's the National Enquirer. I said, don't read that, Drew. It's all lies. (laughs) Mostly. Body armor. The choices that we make every day to live according to God's word. We have to protect our minds and our thoughts, our emotions. And as we mentioned already, sometimes that armor is uncomfortable. And sometimes it's unpopular to do what God has asked us to do. Sometimes it's unpopular to tell the truth. Sometimes you're in an office situation at work. And everyone has lied about this thing previous to you getting there. And all of a sudden, you're in the spot where your conscience is going, this, that's a lie, and I, I, I don't want to do that. And you're faced with this choice, you ever been there? You're faced with this choice of what do I do here? Do I declare the truth, or do I cave to pressure and go along with what has already happened and become that person that no one likes at the office. We're faced with these kind of choices all the time. It's a spiritual battle that you're in. And my encouragement to you, no matter what the cost, stand. Stand. Stand for the truth. Stand for the truth. And listen, God will honor you no matter how bad it gets. He'll either change things there, change your heart, or he'll move you. He'll take care of it as you trust Him. So we've talked about being strong in the Lord. We've talked about putting on our armor. The last thing we'll talk about here is to remember who the real enemy is. How to fight our spiritual battles, remember who the real enemy is. Sometimes we get this confused. If I, was to ask, if I were to ask you how many enemies do you have, you'd probably be thinking of people. People that relationally or whatever, something happened, the chemistry wasn't there, and and all of a sudden, they just don't like me. They're my enemy. There's there's really only one enemy that we have, and that's Satan. That's it. Sometimes we think, oh, it's my boss. He hates me. No, there's spiritual battles that happen there. Your boss, That relative, whoever it is that comes to your mind when I just mentioned who your enemy is, no, listen, there's an enemy that goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, 1 Peter 5, 8 says. And because of that, there's things, there's dissension, there's disunity, there's all these things that get stirred up, but that person, that person is not your enemy. That person is someone who God values and who needs a relationship with him. Anyone there? There's only one enemy, and sometimes we forget. We forget. He's the prince of the powers of the air. He has temporary authority here. It's very temporary. I saw a church sign, and I'm not a fan most of the time. 
of church signs as I go by. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, God, please, why that? You know, why did they say that? You know, sometimes it's just like, ugh. Uh, but this one, this one as we were traveling said, when the devil reminds you of your past, you just remind him of his future. And there's a lot of truth in that. We know the end. We know what's going to happen. We've read the end of the book. We are victorious in Christ. You and I are victorious in Christ. We have a freedom over sin. We have a power over death, all because of what Jesus did on the cross. Ephesians 6, 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. The real enemy is Satan has been, it always has been, always will be, to the end of this age. Don't let the enemy confuse that with you to where you focus your energy on some person and you hold a grudge on some person, focus your energy, you say, Lord, I know that my enemy is Satan. I know he's trying to cause drama here at my job. He's trying to cause drama in this situation, drama in my family. Lord, I turn to you. Bring the resolution. Bring the resolution, God, in your timing. I will wait on your timing. Amen. We're going to celebrate communion here in just a few moments. If we can begin preparing for that. Uh, today, we talked about memorials and how they're all around us, and we wouldn't have them unless there were battles that were fought, if there were things that didn't happen that brought us to a place of remembrance. But we have a different kind of memorial here today. It's a different kind of memorial, because we remember what the Lord did on the cross, but it's not a sad time for us. Now, we've all been to funerals. And even if the person knew the Lord and you knew where they were going, you knew that they were, they were going to uh, be with the Lord or they were already with the Lord because the Scripture says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But they're still sad for us because we're missing the person who's passed on. We, we're missing them. But the thing that's great about our time of communion and remembering what the Lord has done uh, for us, it's not a sad time. It's a victorious time because Jesus rose from the grave. He rose and gave us freedom from sin. We have the power to say no to sin every day as we surrender to the Lord. Our sins past, our sins present, our sins last night. Right? Well, none of us, none of us sinned, I know, last night. There was nobody sinning last night. We are all sinners saved by grace. We are all at the foot of the cross, clinging to the cross of Jesus, saying, thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me, that my sins past, my sins present, the things that, the dumb things, the stupid things that might come or be in my path, that all those things are under the blood of Christ because he did not die and stay dead. We're not serving a dead God. We are serving the risen Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. Because of the blood of Jesus, we are free from sin. We have the power to say no to the enemy and all his plans, all the strategies we talked about. There's no demon in hell that can stand against us. There's no army that can stand against us. We can rise up and be the church of the living God that he's called us to be because of what happened on that day. It was the resurrection of Christ. There is power in the blood, we sing. There is power, power, wonder-working power. One drop of his blood would have been enough that gives us freedom from sin. So see, look, I don't know where you are today in your relationship with the Lord. I don't know if you've come here today and you've not, been, you've not lived a life of surrender to God up to this point. I don't know if you're here today and you, you're just going through the motions. You're like, here I am. I came to check my church box and hear the pastors talking about this challenge of following the Lord. 
We all get off course. We're all susceptible to that. When we come together to worship our Lord, He calls our name. He loves us. He cares about every detail of our lives. Every situation, everything that happens in your life, He cares about you. And before we take communion together, we have an opportunity to surrender our lives afresh, anew to the Lord. I told you many times, it's a daily walk with the Lord. Daily. And Lord, I surrender to you today. If I had time, I'd, I'd read you just a couple journal entries, honestly, every day. Every day. God, I surrender to you. God, I need you. God, if I'm going to do what you've called me to do, if I'm going to follow your plans, if we're going to do the things for this city, God, that you've called us to do, we are desperate for you. We need you. We need your favor. We need your glory to be displayed. We need your presence. God, empower us to do it. It's, it's a daily walk with Jesus. So here today, before we receive communion together, we have an opportunity to surrender our lives afresh to the Lord. And if the Lord has drawn you by his spirit, that's what he does. An old time word for it is woo. You ever been wooed? Maybe you were wooed by your spouse. Another word could be seduced. <laughs> no, that's not the same thing, but, but wooed. Someone just called you. They pursued you. Jesus is pursuing you today. Pursuing you. Will you answer his call? Will you answer his pursuit this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, that we can pause today to reflect on the price that you paid, Lord, the blood that was spilt for us, that we would be free from our sin. Lord, we know that our sin separates us from God. But because of the sacrifice that was made, the blood that was spilt, we turn to you, we put our faith in a Christ who died, was buried, and rose again, that we could be free. And so, Lord, this morning we have an opportunity to turn to you with heads bowed and eyes closed today. You know things aren't right between you and the Lord, and you want to make them right this morning. Just raise your hand where you're at. Thanks for your hands. Who else? Who else this morning? Let's just make things right with the Lord. Let's not go through the motions today. Let's not check the church box, patting ourselves on the back for what we did today. No, it's what he did. It will always be what the Lord did. Who else this morning? And we'll pray. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every hand that's raised today. Or we know that it starts with surrender to you. And so, God, I pray for every person today as they renew their commitment to you. You raised your hand today. Just tell Jesus, I surrender. I receive your forgiveness this morning. I put my trust in you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And as you do that this morning, you know that your home is secure in heaven. And that you are right back on course today to fulfilling the Lord's plans and purposes. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. Can we give the Lord a hand this morning? Thank you, Jesus.